Right, we are back. Now, I had a really bad weekend last weekend trying to get this right. And I realised I was going completely the wrong way around it. So what we have here are some ink stamps. Now, I've got the tree out that I want to use. These are really for kind of rolling with ink and then pressing onto paper, stuff like that. But I really wanted to try these in resin. So I picked these up from my local craft shop, but luckily I found them on Amazon as well. And they come in lots of different sets. But as always, I'll chuck the links in the description box below. So there's lots of different designs on there, but I just want to try the tree. It's really simple. So where I went wrong last weekend and I, when I say wrong I tried five times and I just had to walk away you know you can only try so much and what I was doing in that video well in that attempted video was I was putting my resin in letting that cure taking the tree out then trying to color the print uh, the embedded print into the resin and it just it just wasn't coming out very nice at all so it's time to try it again and what I'm going to try this time, I have just given it a very quick test run and the results were much better. So for this we are using the Let's Resin UV. You can do this in two part, but just layer it. You know, the first stage you'll have to wait for it to cure. If you've got a heat map, then that will speed things up. But we're going to be using the UV resin alongside the 36 micro powder set. But we're not obviously going to use all 36 of the colours. <laughs> that would be silly. We're only going for one pendant. So... What I want to show you this time is I'm just going to get some of my black mica powder and I'm just going to spread some on this piece of paper just to the right hand side. And now because these are very shallow, the details are very shallow, we don't want to go pushing that straight onto that mica powder because it will go into all of the gaps. So I'm just going to fold my paper and just rub it so that I get a coverage, a flat, even coverage of the mica onto the paper, like so. And then I'm just gonna put my tree on and just push it down, only ever so slightly. So that is then covering our tree with a mica powder. So on to the next stage. We're just going to start with a thin layer of our UV resin. Again, if you've got two part, you just do this section with your two part. And again, we don't want that too deep. And we're just going to spread that around just to make sure that the whole front is covered. As always, massive shout out to my channel members. Thank you very much. And to anyone new who's joined the membership. And just make sure those bubbles are all gone. I see one stuck to the surface and another one there. Because they will stand out like a sore thumb in this. And now we're just going to take our tree. And just give it a bit of a flick just to make sure there's no clumps just tapping that any excess off and then we're going to try and get it to the bottom of this mold as best as possible I might have to make like a, a heel top but we'll see so I've got my UV lamp plugged into my power bank and we're just going to set that for couple of minutes by holding down that button now you could color your tree you could do the the branches green you know you could play around with the idea um, you might be able to brush the mica onto the stamp but I think it would to be honest with you I think it would go in between the gaps I think it needs to be placed onto that thin coat of of mica for it to work properly especially with these tiny intricate molds that were uh, molds <laughs> stamps and the good thing is as well, they won't set to the resin. So that has just passed the two minutes. If you're doing this with UV resin, I really do suggest doing this as well. Just giving it a minute. Come on. Just giving it a minute on the underside. 
just to make sure that the underneath is sealed properly because the light may not have penetrated through the black mica powder properly. So give that a minute. So once that has cured, we then just manipulate just with a small stick and you'll find these come out really easy. And with a nice crispy sound as well. And there we have our tree ready to use after cleaning up as many times as we want. So there we have our initial tree. So what I'm going to do now is because the trunk is not touching the bottom of the mold fully, I'm just going to mix up a small amount of black mica powder just to make a hilltop, like a silhouette of a hilltop. Otherwise it will look like the tree is kind of levitating in the sky from my previous experiment I found anyway. So we just colour that up. Don't need much. And now I need to angle my mould just so that it doesn't start spreading upwards into the piece. I'm making a mess. So I just put my a small torch on the underneath. And then I'm just gonna pour this at the base of the pendant. If it wants to come out, <laughs> it will. We really don't need much. We probably don't need all of that. So that is spreading up into the tree. I just don't want it to look like it's floating. So I'm now going to give that a quick blast with my light. Okay, now this next stage is optional. I'm not sure if it will work, but I just want a very thin layer of white mica powder, and I'm in a tiny amount. Hopefully it will resemble some stars. Hopefully. So I'm going to leave some of the blobs in there. So hopefully that will kind of look like clusters, maybe. I'm going to start around the outer edge and if it runs into the center it's fine but at least I know some of the stars will be surrounding the tree hopefully <laughs> and then what we can do is just top up the center of the tree with standard just mix that around make sure that the piece is covered because we are going to go in with another background color to make up the night sky just work out any bubbles that are stuck in the tree there's one there I don't think I'm going to be able to get out I will try let's try the other end it's a bit pointier. It's not coming out. And again, just give that a quick two minute blast just to seal that in. Now for our background, you can do this any colour you want. You don't have to go with the colours that I'm using. You could do a sunset vibe. You could really just change things up however you like. But I'm just going to go with a dark blue. I'm using the same resin that I coloured with the white. It won't matter as long as I mix it thoroughly. And then we're just going to colour that. Not too heavily because we do need the light to shine through it. And just thoroughly mix that up and then we just pour that on top you could blend the blue into a purple you could do lots of different
colors or ideas. Get all of that out. And then just make sure that it's all covered. Around the back of the knobbly bit. <laughs> and all the way to the bottom. Just like that. And again, we're going to give that a two minute cure. And this is another reason why I love UV resin is that you can you can make things really really quickly. I mean I think I'm 10 minutes into filming but obviously I've made short stops here and there. So probably around not even 15 minutes in total. And again I'm just giving that a quick minute on the underside. Okay so what I did was I just gave it another thin coat with the blue and then just topped it up with clear but I didn't want to bore you with the whole... Oh, and now I'm going to cure it for another minute. <laughs> I'm just going to take this out. Be careful not to touch the front. So if you're doing this with two part, I'd recommend doing the first stage with the actual stamp. And then mixing some Marabou Rainbow Alcohol Ink in with your blue layer. And that's it, you just do it in two layers. One with the first layer with the stamp, second layer with your blue and some rainbow alcohol ink. That's optional if you want the stars. As always, give the video a thumbs up, help with the algorithms, drop me a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit that button for me. All right, hopefully this has turned out a bit better than my previous ones. <laughs> wow. See the black come up the side of the stamp area a bit. Um, it kind of looks like little kind of plants growing up the side of the tree. But I'm really impressed compared to my previous versions. Let me grab them. And I also think you could colour this tree. I think even a gold tree would look nice. But this was one of my first ones and you could just see that mess. Where I tried to fill in the areas with the black, it kind of just went, and I tried to do it. I haven't mastered <laughs> the um, the Northern Lights effect yet, but you could add that in the background if you think you can do that. And this was one I did before this one, just as a trial run. But you can see how that tree is just levitating, which is why I wanted to put that black base, but it's not worked fully. But there you go. Like I said, you've got... Lots of different ones. You've got a Christmas tree, you could colour that differently. Um, you've got wording. And you could do these big ones in coasters, which would work really well. You might have to shape them a little bit. And then you've got the other ones, like I said, little snowmen. Christmas themed stuff. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And the tree's quite defined. Right, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.